All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the next video on osmosis and water potential. So let's get started on this next video. So I want to think about a hypothetical scenario. I have salt and I have water, and I'm going to go through and allow them to diffuse. So what should this look like after diffusion? Remember, diffusion, the particles want to spread out as far as they possibly can from each other. So they're going to spread out evenly in the medium. Now, the next thing I want to review is I want to review water molecules. Remember, water molecules can go through and they can move through a membrane because they're small enough to fit through the phospholipid bilayer. Now, as these water molecules move, they can move through the phospholipid bilayer or they can actually move through these protein channels called aquaporins. And these aquaporins allow for faster transport of the water molecules through the membrane. Now, if we're looking at these water molecules here, and we look at the same scenario, but now I put this membrane here, well, what's going to happen? Well, on this side, they're going to diffuse as far as they possibly can. And on this side, they're also going to diffuse. Now, the water molecules are small enough to fit through the membrane, but the salt particles, or the boxes here, are not. So what happens? So we have eight water molecules on this side. We have two salt particles. We have two water molecules on this side we only have eight salt particles. So is this system at equilibrium? Well, the short answer is no, it's not at equilibrium. And in order for this to be in an equilibrium state, the water molecules are going to move over towards these salt particles. Now, why is this in equilibrium when it wasn't before? Remember, they spread out as evenly as they could on both sides. The salt particles couldn't move through the membrane and the water particles could. Well, think about it now. We have two water molecules and two salt particles on this side. And then on this side, we have eight water molecules and I have eight salt particles. So now this system is at equilibrium because the ratio is one to one. So now this has reached equilibrium amongst the system because the ratio of water to salt particles is the same. We have eight particles, eight salt particles on the right, and we also have eight water molecules on the right. On the left, we have two salt particles and we have two water molecules. So now the ratios are even. So what we can do is we can kind of look at <clears throat> So what we can do is look at how cells interact with their environment and what's going to happen to the water in the cells. This is what we call osmosis. So let's say I have a cell and I drop that cell in a glass of water. Now, we're going to assume that the cell has salt particles in it. All cells are going to have salt. And we're assuming that this is completely fresh water. So where does the water go? Well, the water goes inside the cell. And the reason this is because is because we want to equal out that ratio of water to salt. We're going to try to go through and get an equal number of water molecules to salt particles or salt molecules in the solution. The water is always going to go where there's more salt particles to equal out that ratio. So we can see the water goes through into the cell and we'll talk about what we call this. Now let's go through and look at a different scenario. Let's say I take the same cell, it's got the same amount of salt particles, but now I'm going to go through and add salt to the water. Which way is the water going to move now? Well, the water is going to move out of this cell. And the reason the water moves out of the cell now is because there's more salt particles outside the water, less inside. So again, we're trying to equal out that ratio. So we can see all of the water moves out of the cell and into the glass because there's more salt particles in the water surrounding the cell. So a common problem that you'll see is we're going to see this U. And in this U, what we have is a selectively permeable membrane. Remember, selective permeability is a property that only allows specific molecules to enter or exit the cell or move through the membrane. In this case, only water is going to be able to move through that membrane. So the question is, is which way is the water going to move or where does the water go? So let's go through and look at this scenario in a little more detail. We have less salt on the right and more salt on the left. So again, the water needs to equal out the ratio of salt particles to water particles. 
So what's going to happen here is, is the water is going to go through and move to the left hand side of the U. What we're going to see is all of the water moved left to equal out the ratio and equilibrate the salt to water particles. And then we're going to see a change in where the water levels were. We're going to see a drop on the right hand side and an increase on the left hand side because the water is moving to where there is more salt. So for understanding water balance, tonicity is the ability of a surrounding solution to cause change either uh, to gain or lose water in a cell. Now there's three scenarios that we can go through and look at. We have hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. And these are going to be the three words that we're going to be going through and looking at and we're going to have to understand in detail. Now this is going to affect the movement of water in a cell. So let's go through and look at a hypertonic solution. So we're looking at a hypertonic solution. This is a solution that has more solutes, hyper meaning more, in the water. So we're talking about a solution that has more solute in the water. So in this case, a hypertonic solution is just a solution that has lots and lots of salts. So let's go through and take our cell. And again, we're assuming that there's water in the cell. We'll drop it in the glass and we're going to see what happens. Well, in this case, the cell's going to shrivel up and die because where's the water going to move? Well, the water's going to move out of the cell. It's going to move to where there's more salt. Again, we're thinking that we're dropping this in a really, really salty solution compared to the cell. So what's going to happen? Well, the cell shrivels up and dies because the water moves out of the cell. Now, if we look at a hypotonic solution, well, water is going to enter the cell because there's limited solute in the water. We don't have any salt in the water. We have lots of salt in the cell. So what's going to happen now? Well, the water is going to enter the cell, causing it to burst and die. And we can see that is because there's more salt in the cell compared to the water. So the water is going to want to go into the cell. Now, in an isotonic solution, what we're going to see is no net movement of water across the plasma membrane. There's still going to be water moving across the membrane, or the membrane of the cell, or the membrane of a semi-permeable membrane, but it's going to be equal. For every one water, water molecule given, there's going to be one water molecule taken. And this is because the ratio of water to salt is equal. And we're going to see that in an isotonic solution, those ratios are at equilibrium. So we're going to get equal water exchange between the cell and the solution that it's in. So when we're looking at these problems, it's really, really important for us to understand what I'm going through and talking about here. This is where students get the most confused. So if we're looking at this, which side is hypertonic? Remember, we're thinking about the solution. Now, if we look at the left-hand side, this is hypertonic compared to the right-hand side because it has more solute. So when we see these type of practice problems, what we're really looking at is, is the solution that the cell is being dipped in. Is it, does it have more salt than the cell does, a hypertonic solution, or does it have less salt than the cell does, a hypotonic solution? So did you guys learn? Well, did you learn what osmosis is? Did you guys learn the types of tonic solutions? And then did you guys learn how water potential is going to affect the cell? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.